Knowing is the process of arranging like objects in parallel or 90 degree angles as a method of organization. It can be done with anything, Legos, vegetables, cameras, power tools, any physical object. In recent years, flat lay photography has become an extremely popular offshoot of knowing to be able to promote consumer products in both print and digital formats. Additionally, knowing props have become common on text to image machine learning platforms such as Midjourney and OpenAI's Dolly, with these models being relatively effective at outputting artificial images of objects that were knolled. Despite many being able to say that they have practiced knowing in their own lives and independently discovering it, making it ordinary behavior rather than something novel, its rich history that its practitioners from art, filmmaking, and furniture design have created since its inception is what makes our upcoming discussion on knolling worthwhile. That last note about furniture designers may sound off since there has been no furniture in the knoll and flat lay art scene thus far, but let's take a look at some furniture manufacturers to make sense of this. IKEA, West Elm, Herman Miller, Crane Barrel, Knoll, William Sonoma. Wait, let's go back to the last one, Knoll. I guess that was more than obvious. Knoll is an American furniture manufacturer founded by Hans and Florence Knoll in 1938 that is known for its visionary modernist pieces that help shape American open office designs and modernist furniture since its inception. Florence Knoll is remarked as a revolutionary designer that shaped interior design in the home and office spaces as we know today. Knoll's pieces are housed in higher museums throughout the world and notable designers have come from their ranks. One we need to focus on specifically for our story is American architect Frank Gehry, whose works include yeah, he made those. In 1992, Gary produced a number of Benwood furniture pieces for Knoll's catalog after being inspired by the surprising strength of wooden bushel baskets. During Gary's time producing these for Knoll's 1992 catalog, American artist and educator Andrew Cromolo, who at the time was a UCLA master sculpture student, was a janitor and studio hand at Gary's Santa Monica workshop. With the displaced tools used to produce these Bentwood furniture pieces, Cromolo began to do something. He arranged them in parallel and 90 degree angles with each other on the shop floor to organize them. He started to Knoll. Fast forward 15 years later, American artist Tom Sachs shared the origin of knolling in his 2017 log jam, in which he wrote that Cromlow called the organizational method knolling because the furniture company's modern design language was based on similar parallel and right angles. Tom Sachs was able to share this because he also worked in Gary's furniture shop alongside Cromlow for a brief stint before being fired, but during this time, he saw Cromlow knolling. While Cromolo is the inventor of knolling, Sachs is by far the most important figure in our history of knolling because without him, knolling would have simply been something that people did out of habit for organization. It would not have been as rigidly defined because while something like flat lay would have definitely popped up in digital photography, knolling may not have. Sachs was able to propel knolling into relevance after his own personal obsession with it blossomed while working with Cromolo. In his New York City studio, Sachs displays handwritten rules or mantras throughout it on thumbtack pieces of copy paper. One of these mantras, which is often seen as ABK or always be knolling, is one of the most commonly thumbtacked to the studio walls. So all this is interesting, but how is Tom Sachs, a New Yorker involved in the higher art world, able to push knolling into the zeitgeist? In the same way that Tom Sachs' affinity for knolling blossomed out of working with Cromolo, other artists and creatives picked up knolling while working under Tom Sachs in New York City. The two most notable creatives to come out of Tom Sachs' studio are brothers Casey and Van Neistat, traditional filmmakers turned YouTubers. Since the early 2000s, Casey Neistat has produced a number of viral videos and became the most dominant creator on YouTube in 2015 by completely reshaping the platform through his daily vlogging and accompanying style. Van Neistat worked as Tom Sachs' partner until a few years ago, and has since launched a YouTube channel, The Spirited Man. In all the work we just saw, it is obvious that the Neistat brothers took heavy inspiration from Sachs in their studio designs, aesthetics, handyman personas, and applications of knowing. Alongside the Neistat brothers, another prominent practitioner of knowing is Adam Savage of Mythbusters fame. Who has frequently worked with Sachs in recent years. This combined application of knowing by Tom Sachs, the Neistat brothers, and Adam Savage over the course of the past three decades is how knowing has been disseminated to the masses. To wrap up our story, I want to explain how knowing is being practiced today, and there are four main approaches workshop, flat lay, AI, and Lego knowing. The workshop approach is obvious. Think back to Andrew Cromolo and Frank Gehry's studio. It's simply the practice of scanning one's environment, grouping like objects, and organizing them on the basis of parallel and 90 degree angles. Beyond Cromolo, this is how the Neistat brothers and Tom Sachs practice knowing, as evidenced by their studio layout knowing of equipment, tools, and personal items. When you hear the mantra always be knowing, this workshop approach is what you should be thinking of. The second approach, flat lay, often breaks the cardinal rule of knowing by deliberately not placing the organized objects at 90 degree or parallel angles to each other because this approach is often motivated by artistic or commercial intent rather than by productive or organizational intent. Flat lay is solely done to photograph the objects that were organized and then use these photos to share. Despite it often breaking knowing's cardinal rule, it's the most prominent form of knowing because of how commercially effective and visually appealing it is for advertising. Since 2022, with the release of Mid Journey and OpenAI's Dolly, the practice of knowing has found a new frontier with AI and text to image machine learning platforms by generating flat lay knowing photography. This AI driven approach has unlocked a new creative way to approach knowing and democratize the practice for those who cannot afford studio spaces or expensive photography equipment. While AI generated knowing images may take out the physical and organizational spirit of knowing, I do appreciate how it democratizes the practice for those who approach knowing with an artistic intent. Lastly, knowing has become extremely popular in one other functional area 
Lego. So let's break open the bags. Okay. And get to knolling. No. As we begin to knoll, well, let's explain what knolling is because we've used the phrase a lot, pretty casually. We have, and I've been knolling for years without knowing that it had a name. Uh, knolling has its origins from a janitor named Andrew Cromolo, who was a janitor for Frank Geary. In my eyes, the Lego approach brings the same spirit of the workshop approach, but to a completely new space. While the other approaches take the spirit out of and break the cardinal rule of knolling, the Lego approach puts newfound spirit into knolling and abides by the cardinal rule of knolling itself. Ultimately, when we look back at why one should care about knolling when it tends to be a part of human nature, it's because of its rich history and how photographers, artists, and designers have transformed it into an organizational art form. Sure, the functionality and utility that knolling brings to an artist's studio space or a Lego enthusiast's home is likely to only increase their productivity by a small percentage, but knolling has character. Its character is what makes it stand out. 